Okay, so good morning, almost afternoon here. So we're gonna do this week's session, this is week six. So you've either taken your exam last week or you're gonna take it this week, all right? Um, what you really need to focus on that your programming skills are getting up to, to pace. We're actually ahead of what my schedule is. Uh, we're already jumping into loops, which is good. Um, but you really need to hammer on the practice, practice, practice. We've been doing a lot of programming in class. And one thing we've noticed is these, these little tiny errors, like you, you get an error message and it says something's wrong on line seven. And you're pounding your head against the wall trying to figure out what's wrong with line seven. Well, really, the line that has a problem is the previous line with a mismatch parentheses or a quote or something like that that's messing up your compiles. Rather than kill 10 minutes of your time, some of you I've seen have actually started to anticipate these errors and, and solve them within seconds as opposed to minutes. And especially when you're not of, uh, of the confidence to be able to ask for help and you waste even more time. So practice really helps you get faster and see common errors. And asking for help immediately is a great idea. And I really think you need to learn to ask for help more. In fact, a lot of you um, have, uh, let's see, uh, stackoverflow.com. I've shown this to a few of you already, but stackoverflow.com is the place to ask for help, and you can create a login here. Uh, first, you should search for anything that's related, like if you're trying to figure out how to do string comparison with Java, you should search here and see if you come up with a, a good solution. If not, or if there's some question that's esoteric that you can't find someone else asking, go ahead and ask here and people will answer your question and pretty well in real time. So take a look at Stack Overflow. The other thing I recommend for programming is, well, if I'm programming, I go to my music.google.com and I bring up something like Rush and then I start my Rush radio so I can uh, crank away to Rush while I'm programming. So I'm going to put that back in the background. Uh, actually, I should just turn it off or else this video is going to get banned for having too much commercial radio on it. So that's really the hints here. Make sure you're programming lots, practicing, get ahead on the topics. Which topics should you be doing? Follow the WSQ stream. That's the real thing. And while you're doing that, you should see, hey, I can do Mastery 12 and Mastery 14 and do those. Remember one blog post uh, and video if you're going to do videos or, or other formats for each topic, whether it's WSQ or Mastery. You can reuse content for different things, but you should keep these things to short entries for each item so we can get those marked and you can check them off your list of things to do. Other than that, good luck on the exam if you still have to do your exam. And, and I'm going to show you how to do some programming. So we're going to go through and see WSQ08, how to start that assignment. I'll do a version in C++ for the C++ group, and I'll do a version in Python for the Python group. So I'm going to pause this now, and then I'll recut those back in. Have an awesome week. And I'm back. Did you miss me? So we're going to take a look at WSQ08, like I noted, uh, told you. One thing to mention here as well, some of you might not have noticed, but because this tag cloud makes it easy for you to see what each other are doing on your masteries and your WSQs, um, it doesn't really make sense for me to have a separate page for each one of these masteries. The actual title of the mastery is enough to let you know what you're supposed to be doing. And if you want to see what other people are doing on these masteries, or the WSQs of course, you can just go and check the tag cloud. The WSQs are, are, are going to need some more information because I need to tell you exactly what you're to be working on. Remember that WSQs is kind of your thread of learning throughout the course. So let's go take a look at number eight, on to functions. And, and you'll notice that they're a little bit different, the, the C++ and the Python groups. Um, but really, it's almost the same. You can, I can almost get confused of which one I'm looking at. Anyway, we're on the, on the C++ one. So what we want to do is we want to go back to WSQ03, fun with numbers, and then re-implement what that says. But we want to go through and do functions, okay? So actually, I'm going to just jump back here for a second. Bear with me. I want to open up WSQ03 in another tab and, and WS80 here. So what did WS3 say? We need to ask the user for two integer values. 
then get the sum, then get the product, then get the uh, integer-based division. Remember, integer-based division means no decimal points. And then the remainder of that integer division. So for example, if we were using 8 and uh, 5 as the two numbers, then the sum would be 8 plus 5 is 13. The difference would be 8 minus 5, which is 3. The product would be 40. The integer-based division would be uh, 8 divided by 5 would be 1 and the remainder of that division will be three. Okay, so you should have already done this. If you haven't, well, you didn't really need to get caught up, but let's take a look at how I would do this differently with functions, okay? If you remember that mathematical function is simply, it has some input, which in this case for C++ we call parameters, and it possibly has some output. Um, most functions that we write in math have output, but sometimes we'll have functions in uh, C++ or other languages which don't have an output which could be called procedures but we generalize as saying they're functions. So let's jump into our editor. I'm using um, I'm using Atom now because it's cool and I recommend it and it's open source. So the first thing you should do actually when you open up an Atom file is let's just go ahead and save it. So if you're starting to play around with GitHub you might have a directory where you're putting all of your stuff um, that's what I did. You can look at my GitHub video for the GUI version. So I'm going to call this WSQ08 because that would make sense, right? So let's call it WSQ08.cpp. You'll notice all of a sudden our editor changes in Atom because it knows we're in a C++ program. You can see that here. It knows we're in a JIT um, repository. You can see that there. Oh, let's not worry about it right now. So let's start off with our classic uh, IO stream. Let's include the IO stream using namespace std. If you get into commercial programming or professional programming, a lot of people say that this is a bad thing to do with the using namespace std. But let's just uh, make your lives easier while learning to program by doing this. Okay, so of course, we just start with a simple, let's just make sure that I can still program in C++. So I'm going to save that. Notice I didn't actually use the menu here because I'm using keys all the time. And then I'm going to open up a uh, terminal window and clear that up. Let me make this terminal window bigger for you so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see. Remember, when you're making videos, you should make the fonts really big as well. So I was in my devel directory, uh, tc1017. So there we go. There's the files. Let's make sure that compiles fine. Go. Yes, it compiles. And we run that with an a.out because I'm on a Mac or on Linux it would be the same a.exe in Windows. So that looks good. So let's uh, let's rock and roll it here. So what did we want to do um, in this actual program? Oh, and bad Ken, I should always have a return zero to follow specs there. So let's put the one, return zero in there, and let's let's start actually making the program here. So we need to ask the user for two integers. So this program does some calculations on two inputs and uh, we'll do that and then we'll ask them for the first input give me an integer please and we'll put some space there so it looks nice and then we'll do a cn oh i need some variables don't i let's make some variables int first and second now a little pause there remember we could actually take these variables and declare them out here. That would make them global variables available to any function in our program. We don't want that though, so we're gonna move those back inside main, which makes those local variables to this function. Okay, you should look up about scope, or in Spanish, alcance, and, and remember that you should try to limit the scope of all your variables. So we've got int first and second. Notice as well that these variables have no values. Some people might think they have a default value, but in general they have no values, or it depends on the architecture. So now I'm going to use CN to get from the first. Okay, and I'm just gonna copy paste there because I'm efficient, and I'll, uh, I'll say another integer here instead. So let's call that another, and I'll read that into second. And then just to check everything is cool, the numbers, you gave our put a space there first and second and L. Let's make sure that works. Oops, 
Got to compile it first, right, Ken? Oh, we have some errors. What's wrong? Hmm. The numbers you gave are first and second. You went invalid to binary operator. What did I do wrong? We did a C out first. Oh, I'm missing one of the arrows. There we go. So let's try that. Let's try that. Give me number 10 and 7. You give me 10 and 7. Awesome, that's working well. So now let's actually get it to do some work. So we want to get a few things. Let's just work on the sum. So I'm going to call int sum right, and make it a variable. Now what I want it to be is I want it to be the sum of first and second. Okay. That's actually what I want. I want to get the sum of the first and second. Of course, I could just say first plus second here, and that would be simple. But what I want to demonstrate is the fact, or the, the concept of delegating responsibility for calculations to something else. Now, if I try to compile this, it's going to scream. It's going to say, hey, you know what? I don't know what the sum is. And that's true, because it doesn't know what the sum is, because that has to already exist. So what we're going to do now is, we can pretend that your friend is working on this part and you can delegate this work to them. And you're telling them, I want you to make a function called the sum, which takes two parameters, an x and a y. Does it matter what the names of these variables are? Actually, it doesn't. They're called the parameters of the function, the input to the function. I'm going to call it x and I'm going to call it y. What's really important here is what are the types it's expecting? It's expecting an integer and another integer, and I'm going to work with those two integers. And this right at the front says, I'm going to give you back an integer when you call my function with those two integers. So in this case, our function is really easy. What does this uh, function do? It creates a answer, which is the x plus the y. And then it's going to return that answer. Okay. That's the job of this function. So we now have a function that takes an x and takes a y and returns a, say, z or answer, which is the sum of those two. And then in our main program, which remember that's where execution starts. The execution doesn't start at the beginning of the lines. Execution always starts in the main program inside your C++ program. So we create our variables. We ask for the first. We ask for the second. Uh, we could tell them that. Sure, that's fine. I'll just keep that. And then we'll say, and the sum of those two values is ta -da -da -da, sum. Okay, and this function is being called here. We call this part up here the function declaration, where we're declaring this function exists. We might use it sometime in the future. It'd be a bad idea if we declare it and don't actually use it. And then down here, we're actually going to use the function. There's ways to separate it so that we create the functions in different files so we can distribute our work. And you'll, you'll want to learn how to do this when you're um, creating your own libraries or using your own libraries. And also, distributing work like this is a good idea when you're working on large projects with large teams where large is bigger than one. All right, so let's see if this actually compiles. Let's try. Yay, it compiles. And let's try to run it. Give me an integer, 10 and 7, and the sum of those two values is 17. Awesome. So that's good. It works. We've changed this um, program that we based on WSQ03 to this one to not do all the calculations inside main, but actually use define and use our own functions. Now, if you wanted to start on the next part, so we wanted sum, we wanted difference, right? So I just copy paste that and we'd say the next one's called the difference of x and y, and the answer would be x minus y, right? Hmm. In fact, these are so similar, we could actually create a common function that takes an extra parameter, which is the operator, whether you want to plus it or minus. Oh, that's advanced. We'll deal with that later. And then you just use it again down here. Let's say int. Let's calculate the difference. And that would be the difference of first and second. Great! And then let's print the difference as well. So the difference of those two values is, and we don't print the sum, we print the difference. Let's save that, baby. Compile it, run it. Let's try 10 and 7 again. And the sum is 17, the difference is 3. Look, we're rocking along. Finish the rest yourself. Have fun.
Thank you.